Hello, this is Scott Homan, the host of the Witness on the Ground podcast. Thanks for showing up today. Today we have a very special event that we hosted, and this is a recording between the artists that are in the film Witness Underground. I'm the director. The artists are Ryan Sutter from Ryan Sutter Music, and he started a production studio called Nuclear Gopher, which was like an isolated, secular music only music community and also music production studio, Nuclear Gopher, within a cult. That's all dissolved now, but a lot of the artists got out in part due to things that Ryan Sutter wrote. Someone in the audience asked where they can find the book. It was hugely influential on many of the artists in the Nuclear Gopher community. People are secretly reading his very honest and authentic truth-telling book called Hira Hira. And he tells in this episode where to find that book on the internet as an ebook you can download for free. We had a really beautiful conversation. Uh, one of the guests expressing herself, it's a beautiful expression of power of music to heal and save lives. And that is the theme of this podcast and why we highlight artists who've left cults. So it's Witness Underground Podcast, Artists Escaping Cults, tagline of the film, Escaping a Cult. Or Witness Underground, the documentary, Escaping a Cult. Uh, she poses the question, how were these artists able to create this expansive art scene within the Jehovah's Witnesses? So Ryan explores that background. Ryan discusses the song Aaron's and how that has a tie to his dad making an excuse to break all the rules of the religion to have an excuse to come talk to his son, even though it's completely against the rules. A woman in the audience just left the religion and was just announced. So we discuss the meaning of what that term is in the religion as this particular individual is struggling with the great realizations and the rabbit holes of diving into the lies and the misrepresentations of reality that the religion is so good at using to keep people in con under their control. And so this person sort of having this unraveling moment of like what the world, how it really works, what the world is like, and how to navigate that process. So we all kind of get into our own experiences with that as a way to sort of assist this particular individual in this episode, which is very special. And I'm so glad that they came to watch the film and that it had this effect on all of us to kind of get to tell, you know, start this conversation of, well, what was that moment like for us? Maybe we can help the people that are just going through it now. Being publicly shamed by the religion for some sin or breaking of a rule of some kind. We get into highlighting two of the bands. All the members are still in their religion and how kind of incredible that music is and why we love their music. The Akai and Pop Riveter, they're very talented artists. And we quote the Apostle Paul McCartney and then Ryan live serenades us. That's a pretty fun moment. Witnessunderground.com forward slash art is where you can find most of the music that is highlighted in the film. The vast majority of it is there with links. Some of it's very well organized and little descriptions. And some of it's just like a dump of content. Like if you want to dive in, there's like 50 links there to other, all these artists and like 30 some albums of music. Now, one of the great resources that we get into, we just mentioned really for the sake of that individual is recoveringfromreligion.org, a place where I found a lot of helpful information about many different religions and helpful information simply about mental health. And it's the one organization that I highlight in the film and the credits. Like if you have questions or you're going through something like this, go to recoveringfromreligion.org. We also get into atheism. It's a beautiful way to start. If you have come from a high control group where they have indoctrinated and given you ideas that you have to believe or you conform to ways of thinking or worldviews, atheism is just a clean blank slate. You can add whatever you want back in and eventually that label has no power either. But it's a useful thing. We kind of discuss like what kind of atheisms exist and how do we discuss that term within the religious framework. It's a, it's a big topic of debate and it's very contentious but if you're not in that group that word has basically no power it's just like something you never think about but we kind of discuss how atheism has affected all of us throughout our adult lives given that this all happened for us this unraveling and this like coming into the real world if you will happened so long ago 15 20 years ago for us what kind of spirituality do we participate in in our lives anyways it's a really wonderful conversation and i hope that you enjoy it if you want to learn more about this film, how to watch it, go to witnessunderground.com. And there you can find this film, the link to watch it, the series, the XW coming out series, the podcast that you're listening to right now, Witness Underground Podcast. Season one is all there as YouTube videos for this channel. And also we have a podcast on many, all the platforms. We're on Apple, we're on Spotify, et cetera. So anywhere you want to listen to it, you can. And we're in the season two. This is episode five, 25. 
So season two, episode five. Thank you for coming and I hope you enjoy the episode. Please like, subscribe, follow. That means that makes a big deal for us. It's, it really helps the channel grow. And we are so close to a thousand subscribers on YouTube. And we've had a couple hundred people subscribe in the last couple of months. It's been really cool to see such a huge growth. It means a lot. So please hit the subscribe button and enjoy the episode. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for watching the film and hanging out. We have Ryan Sutter from the film you just watched and Chad Rieger, Ryan Sutter of the Lavone and Nuclear Gopher fame, Chad from Ghost Army and High TV fame, as you saw in the film. And Day we... Trip. Oh, also day trip. Yeah, very important. We mentioned day trip. Coolest of the cool kids. <laughs> much. We have another chat here. Trinity says that was really great. Thank you for the positive review. Oh, hello. <laughs> One of the special guests we had at this screening was Annie from a band called Voreen. V a u r e e n. They're an incredible band. Review of her band is beautiful. Voreen sounds like if Sabbath joins Susie and the Banshees and Sonic Youth for an epic weekend mushroom trip. <laughs> I absolutely love that review and I find it accurate. You can find them on Spotify. She joins us actually in person with one of the artists in the film. I met Annie from the Voreen through Chad and another member of the band that Chad fronted called Ghost Army, who's also highlighted in Witness Underground. So it's really cool to have Annie show up. So she's the other in-person voice you hear throughout the episode today, throughout the Q&A. She had a lot of uh, things to say, a lot of uh, contributions, and it was really lovely to have her. So check out her work on Spotify and everywhere else, the Voreen, V-A-U-R-E-E-N. Thanks again, Annie, for coming and showing up and for giving us permission to highlight you and your music. Thoughts? I, I was really moved. You know, it's a very vulnerable, intimate look into the powerful way in which music kind of saves us. Like I'm, I'm a musician. I didn't grow up in a cult religion, but there was still religion and there was still oppression in other, other aspects. And I think it's just, it's one of those profound truths that the act of playing getting together with other people and playing music is more often it's more powerful than words and like when she, when she was saying like I would just cry while I was playing and that, then I would feel better like that's that's such a perfect beautiful illustration of that and I think it's like I just think it was cool that you guys were able to do this. I'm sure there are, are situations where even that would be seen as, even just playing a guitar at all would be seen as like, that's off limits. It's time but, to be devoting to uh, getting closer to your- uh, Yeah, and somehow it still happened. And that's just like, that's life-saving. We had a- um, we had a kind of interesting reason why we were sort of given permission a little bit in our minds. My mother was a singer uh, and she was in a band with her brother. Um, she was one of 13 kids and they used to be the, the brunette family singers when and they were like they did like radio programs and stuff. I've got some of the old recordings. It's really neat. And uh, her dad was a home recordist who would record his kids doing songs and would record music with my grandma. And so it was sort of like it was already there. And but when my mom and she wasn't raised as a witness. So when she became a witness, she had to figure out how to balance that for herself. And the way she did that was um, she actually formed a band with her little brother, Rick, who also became a witness. And they figured out these kind of rules and they became sort of, I don't know, one of maybe three band, uh, Jehovah's Witness cover bands in the Twin Cities that would play everybody's wedding receptions. They just, that was kind of their thing. Like if, if you were getting married and you were a witness, you were getting Cactus, Crystal, or Mountain Mist. You were getting one of those three bands, no matter what <laughs> congregation you're in. Um, and, and, and so we had all this gear in the basement 
when we were kids and nobody had ever told us this was in any way controversial, right? It was just mom's a singer. So, but we didn't, we Wait, took that it. was not unknown to people. No, no, but she was like, we didn't know she was playing these like carefully vetted lists of songs for these events. And and we were just taking the stuff and going off our own crazy creative direction from day one because we didn't have, uh, well, we didn't even know what we were doing at first. So so we kind of backed into it and I feel like we got lucky. Like we didn't have to go fight for that permission later after having been sort of raised, you know, we were kind of brought in by having the connection to a one of the few sanctioned local witness bands. Yeah. So yeah. what what was the what was the Jackson Five song that you fucking hated because your little brother said that you heard it over and over. Was it ABC? Is it Rock and Robin? Which one was it? Uh, I believe Rock and Robin is yeah. the answer to your trivia question. <laughs> <laughs> I remember from ever ago uh, talking to Reed like asking him questions about like you know like so your your mom just like played music like still kind of you know i, I was the same incredulous boy uh even when we were like making our own like goofy like post-rock music like i wouldn't be surprised if the fact that my mom was singing in a band held back our family in terms of like spiritual advancement in the congregation I don't know that for a fact, but like I, my dad, it took him forever to become a ministerial servant. Um, and mm -hmm. I'm not positive it wasn't because mom was a singer. But like I said, everybody in the Twin Cities, when they, we got to go to everybody's weddings because mom was always singing in the band. So, you know, uh, <laughs> it was it was a, it also gave us access to a lot of gear. Um, which kids don't normally have. We had drum sets and keyboards and guitars and amps and microphones and like so it was it was it was kind of cool. Like we didn't have cable TV or the internet because it was the eighties, but we did have essentially a music room. I feel like that was pretty fortunate. We weren't rebels at all. We were just kids doing the thing, and then we never stopped. And I remember being kind of fortunate. I think I'd asked you, like, next time you go to this studio that you talk about all the time, this nuclear gopher, like, can I tag along? And I remember just, like, walking into your basement, just, like, everything was all set up. There's already a PA, and there's, like, guitars plugged into amplifiers with... And I'd never seen, like, yeah. guitars plugged into pedals, plugged into amplifiers, and it was also like ready to be recorded at any given moment. I was just like, it was a I, standing working studio. If you went into that room in the basement, there were microphones taped to the ceilings. There were cables running everywhere. We had this old metal desk that Rhett would call the Nuclear Gopher International Communications Center that had like a PC and like all the recording stuff. It was pretty cool. And we would just come home from school and like that's what we did. We just we didn't have anything else to do. You know, it was that or go to the meetings. We got and, a couple and, questions. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> One thing I wanted to mention before I jump into Bridget's question and Ryan's question is what you said, Annie, about the power of music to heal is something I, I think I knew intuitively when before I started this because I played in bands and have a deep connection to live music and performance. As I've evolved the project, that's the theme of the podcast now. The Witness Underground podcast is about the power of music to heal or the power of creativity in general. And I think that's an insightful message to get from the film, even though it's not really stated clearly. So thanks for saying it. That's the first yeah. thing that said. <laughs> Bridget asks, how did you decide to frame your story of Jehovah's Witnesses surrounding the indie music scene in suburban Minneapolis? It was very well done. So I really appreciate that. And I'll take a stab at it. Ryan and Chad, you guys can also jump in on that. I guess my first go at that question is, I grew up in the same area and I knew Chad and Eric and Cindy loosely, more Eric than anyone else in the film. And because I was in a band and I moved to Minneapolis, so I end up partying in sort of like the Jehovah's Witness version of going to college and hanging out in the dorms or like on campus or something and having college friends that like this scene was sort of like my experience having some version equivalency of that. And, um, when I went to make the movie, I was already making content and I crowdfunded, we crowdfunded together, this group, we're going to make something. And I, the idea was to keep the series going. But then I realized like I should work with people that I know with music that I think is great. There was like 20 people I was going to interview and I did interview a lot of them. But when I finally 
shot this, I was like, this whole thing kind of stands alone on itself. And it has all this archival videos. And these people are kind of fired up to tell it and support it by giving me music and videos to go with it. So that's the, to answer why Minneapolis, why these people. I was close to Eric and some of the second generation nuclear gopher community, I guess, the ones of the ones that left, especially. I'll only add that I didn't know Scott before this at all. And um, the interview in the video was from the first time we ever met. So that was pretty fun. That's one of my favorite little factoids. Ryan's a fantastic individual, but his ego doesn't need the, the sunshine blowing up his skirt. <laughs> that, like, I don't know if he cringes or, or, or secretly loves, probably a little bit of both. Um, I have been trying to make all of our friends refer to him as the godfather because he's the one who wrote the, he wrote the blog that we all weren't supposed to read. Like, so honest. I've never been as honest as he was honest on that blog and it was very inspiring and i think it was inspiring to a lot of us and and yeah i, I love that little factoid the fact that you two in spite of like knowing each other really well now like so scott and i when we were witnesses like scott would pose these ideas i gave him a little nickname i called scott speculatio speculation spe specu I, I did some sort of joke about <laughs> him like he had these like well what if <laughs> no, 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 no. I, was, I was very a good little witness i was like Yo, yo, that's speculation. That's that's not, you know, that's not in bounds. And he's like, but why? Like, let's just talk about this. And I'm like, no, buddy. We just have to have decorum and propriety. And da, da, da. I would love to talk about that. Time I, I like, want to know what this <laughs> nickname was whenever you remember it, Chad. Speculation. Uh, <laughs> like it. It's supposed to sound a little bit like Felicio. I, I did wink. I was like, come on, Speculation. <laughs> that's really funny. I have never heard that. I don't believe. That was it, but let's go with it for tonight. It was. <laughs> it was. And then Ryan, let me know if you want to go up on screen. Ryan says, I'm curious in your later years, have you been able to connect with family? Also, is the religion getting more lenient as time advances? I'll go no with the first question, and I don't really know with the second question because I don't think so. Like, the, no rules have been softened that have caused my family to change their stance towards me. I don't really spend a lot of time in XGW space, but every once in a while, I just I just check. Are we still shunning? Yes. Okay. Cool. I'm um, uh, all right. You know. <laughs> For the the people who haven't heard, give me the two sentence experience you had about the last time you you hung out with your old man. Let me let me okay. try and make this as short as I can. My grandmother, his dad, or his mother. Uh, is in uh, a home in hospice care. She was reaching her 95th birthday. And in order to throw her a party and get everybody, including my father, to show up, they couldn't call it her 95th birthday. And instead, they had to call it her welcome back to Minnesota party. And that allowed my dad to go. And since I was there, because I've been uh, also visiting her in in the hospital, I was the DJ playing old swing music on records from the forties. And uh, my dad had to act like a normal person towards me for an hour. And that was great. <laughs> by pressure of all of your normal family. You know, he's surrounded by 60 people who are all there for his mom and he may, he showed up. So he had to have conversations with me and stuff for an hour. Uh, but he, he has had no no other contact since, so. and that was a fluke. I can answer that, like, I don't know if, if it's necessarily softened. I have run into, I mean, topically, I've run into Reed uh, a couple of times over the last, uh, Ryan's younger brother, Reed, um, who was the drummer in Day Trip and, and, and whatnot. I've run into him a couple of times, and, like, either after a show, a very interesting kind of impromptu reunion outside of the my bloody valentine show at the palace theater and a bunch of witnesses who because of their minnesota graces they didn't shun us outright because it would have been very awkward for everybody else around them so and, and it gave me the opportunity to basically i got to sexually harass my old guitar player josh because he got into way into fitness that told me he had nice tits um yeah <laughs> But you know, I've run into Reed a couple of times at the beginning. It's always good. 
And then there's always a point I can see in his eyes where it's just like, oh no, I'm enjoying this. This is not cool. And he just like very quickly will just kind of like about face and walk away. That, um, you remember the, my interaction with Rita that my bloody Valentine show. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that your non-witness guitar player said, you're either going to walk up to your little brother. Or I'm going to make this whole fucking deal. Yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah. all right, I gotta go. Like I gotta, cause you were going to give for the record of any of the people who totally didn't Read Ryan's blog. I'm totally not watching this recording. Ryan tried to do the the Christian thing and <laughs> give him space, but you remember as a witness, it's awkward as hell when you run into somebody and like you you do, you feel shitty about shunning as much as they do. So, well, maybe not as much, but it it's not a thing anybody wants to do. So, yeah, you know, I didn't want to put Reed in an awkward spot, but a really good thing came out of it because when my my buddy Michael made me talk to my brother, he actually wound up. We actually wound up seeing each other one more time after that. The little red car that I'm driving in the movie where War is Over thing is playing, that's a little uh, late 60s Triumph Spitfire. And Reed had a late 60s Triumph GT6 back in high school, and he still had the transmission for the car lying around. And uh, I told him I had a Spitfire, and he said, oh, you can have this transmission. And he wound up coming over to my house and giving me a transmission. And we we talked for a bit, and I let him drive my car around the neighborhood. I don't know if that the indicates... Most the most middle American part. thing I've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> this is the most what thing you've ever heard? Middle, middle America. Like, <laughs> well, we're not talking to each other for decades, but I do have a transmission in... I feel like that would be a right. form of love to give it to you. <laughs> well, it's Not allowed to give you verbal love or time love. To tie it back to the music on um, oh, on Louder yes. Longer Lobster, there's a song called Aaron's, and the whole song is about my dad using Aaron's as an excuse to, to come by my house. Be like, oh, well, I had this extra couch I needed to get rid of, so I brought it over. <laughs> so I, I don't, I don't know if, if it came through, but Annie was like, "Do you have a moment to uh, speak briefly about transmission parts?" It was like, <laughs> <laughs> it was absolutely. Good. I'm just here to share the Triumph catalog with you. Uh, <laughs> if, you, you have, have a, if you have a so moment. Related also, topic, always yes. Also, Ryan, you have. 11 teen more uh, nieces and nephews and um <laughs> and all of these uh the uncles and aunts have oh, merged with the infinite that goes back to to ryan's <laughs> question do we have family connection and the answer is resounding no unfortunately except yeah. apart for transmission experience except for bizarre random scenarios <laughs> i gotta say trinity i can imagine things are really rough for you and i'm sorry and uh thank you for being here can i ask trinity like what quote just announced means now because like when when ryan left there was like a differentiation between disfellowship and when i left they like kind of neutered they took that voice away from us so you couldn't even when when we were announced it wasn't like a chad rager has been disfellowshipped or yeah. they just say is no longer a jehovah's witness and so it's like did he remove himself like when i was leaving that was kind of a consideration do you want to go out like deuces? Like, you know, uh, has has disassociated himself as a member of the Jehovah's Witnesses, which is a way of saying like, I love you all, <laughs> but I say this to the Watchtower. I would like to friend. be able to do that because I still need to go ahead and I'm going to do it finally, I think, Get, like write the letter, but I would like to send a middle finger as a photograph <laughs> instead of I no longer want to be a part of your cult. <laughs> Please take my name off your list. Wouldn't it be nice if you could do your own announcement? I would love to have <laughs> a finger gun like that. Yeah, that would be awesome. Would... Go to every congregation you could possibly enter and then stay from the stage. I'm not a Jehovah's Witness. Nice. I was... would say I announced the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah. I, I would think that would be a I mean, I was I was in the audience the one time I was publicly reproved and uh it, it was a pretty shitty experience. Um Probably was it sort that. of like Eric describes in the film? Oh, yeah. <gasps> Absolutely. Can you tell us what was the awkward topic that they gave a talk on just before that as announcement? I, don't really... <laughs> I think I was too busy dying inside to worry about it. But, I mean, I had sex with my girlfriend. So, at some point, they must have talked about fornication. I just know it was terrible when you're sitting there and they announce this. And then everybody comes up afterwards and is all like, I wonder what he did. <laughs> and they didn't announce her in her congregation so 
because she was private and I was public. So, which it still confuses me, but um, <laughs> I got to live with that bizarre no no privileges can't comment at the meeting can't say prayers anymore everybody wonders what what you did that was was terrible for like a couple you know year and a half before people started to act normal again it's not as bad as just fellowshipping though so trinity mentions i'm just going to read it as someone who's just announced a couple of weeks ago i can say they have not softened the religion hasn't softened on this topic except technically the elders books this family can stay in touch but this like it's still frowned upon so they like kind of don't do it. Ryan, you left in 2004, correct? Uh, officially 2005. Five. And then Chad was like 2008 or nine or something. And I was still eight. Obama. That was my first I, vote. <laughs> I was kind of like putting bows on things. I, I attempted the fade. The kid was born in 2007. Yeah. Worst six months of my life. 2008. There we go. It shouldn't be, if you had more to say, like Chad's interested, I'm interested. It's like, so we've been out a really long time. Me, 15 years. Chad, about the same. Ryan, a little bit longer. Yeah, and... Russell was in charge when I was when I left. Yeah. <laughs> Couple of years, <laughs> <laughs> not a century more. Um, but if you, if you had more to say, like it's it's interesting because we made this film so long ago, and this experience for us is so long ago. But for someone who's fresh out, like I have no idea how someone would take the experience of watching this film if you just like change the way you think. Or I mean, obviously, just being announced doesn't I mean you just thought. You just left the religion, but the, it's very raw, fresh wound. So anyway, regardless of whether you comment again, awesome that you're here. And it's like, gets better. It's like the best decision. <laughs> it does get better. I got to say, I've never, I got no regrets. I don't, I, some of, some of these times we've chatted, people will ask, you know, like how, I don't know how much this is still a part of your life. And other than like these movie showings, talking with people like this, the answer is like, not at all. I don't worry about not being a witness any more than I worry about, I don't know, not having hair. It's just a ship that sailed a long time ago, you know, and it's not part of my life really. But, um, you know what? I honestly think you, you bring up more frustrated resentments about their thing than I do. How about the, the Jehovah's Witness? Sort of oh, if I had to change one thing, I would regrow <laughs> something up here and look a little less Patrick Stewart. You know, I mean, come on. <laughs> Engage. But, no, but seriously, it's, 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 it's so well. You, you move on, you know, you kind of you get a life. It's I think it's super important to get a life of your own and uh, uh, figure out what you do believe more than what you're reacting against. A good friend of mine, a couple of uh, uh, screenings ago, he's known me for like 12 years and he saw the movie and he's so sick and tired of hearing me like talk about my upbringing. And he has a couple other friends like, he, you know, he's friends with the, the high TV crew. And so like he's heard us all kind of whine about how much the Watchtower sucks. Um, and then he watched this movie within the last couple of months and he was all fired up. He was like, there's, there's MIA POWs, man. Like you need to go back and get them. <laughs> I'm like, they have to do it themselves. <laughs> yeah, but, but I was really happy that like the movie kind of fired him. He was so, he'd never grown up as, you know, didn't have any experience with, as a witness. Um, and he was, he was still kind of fired up. Like you need to go back and get fools. And I'm like, they <laughs> threw that shit themselves. Well, one thing I wanted to say, and it's from a quote, I'm going to try to remember it. It's from you, Ryan. I don't remember exactly how you stated it, but it's basically control is the enemy of love. Like if you are, hmm. uh, you talked about fear, you framed it in fear. Fear is a result of control and an imbalance and misuse of power. I mean, it's a beautiful takeaway. And for anybody who's like starting a new, um, a new chapter, in a whole new world with a new framework and building their own understanding. Like that's the thing to remember control and fear are the opposite of love. I, I love that. believe that strongly. So I'm glad you brought that up. It is interesting how much you you're basically quoting, you know, whatever passage that Paul wrote um, about like what love Paul is. McCartney? Paul McCartney, yes. 
Yes, the apostle Paul McCartney. Uh, <laughs> Come on, give your heart to somebody. Sorry. No, it's good. It's good. It's good. No, but I mean, it, it's interesting. Uh, I was thinking about this uh, this time watching it uh, through, and I feel like Brian, I've seen this movie dozens and dozens and dozens of times, but like, like you're basically quoting one of the most relevant scriptures that I've ever read that talks about love, what it is and what it isn't. And, and I, I think that's a, it's a bold statement, but yeah, like it, how can you love when the fear is in the way of that? It's not Paul, but my brother, Reed, has a song on the Pop Riveter record that would be the it first was about thing. love and how you shout love. love but you don't know love if you don't show love could read it 10 times and never yeah. get it and then the sun shines so bright on I them never get it. It. i know and i'm just like every time I hear so song, good I'm like oh dude you know right. come on <laughs> you are right but also <laughs> i'm still here fucker anyway yeah, I love my little brother. I really do. I love Thank him so much, and I love his music. He's a talented, super freaking talented. That album blew my mind. Of everything that came out of the Witness world, that Pop Revitor album, I was so impressed by. I listen to it all the time. I still listen to it all the time. It's some. It's one of my it's, top ten favorite records. I love it. it and is, I, I also. Wish, I wish I could promote the hell out of it because actually, when yeah, I first cut the film. No shit. The very first thing highlighted the shit out of Pop Riveter, and I had to change it on the first watch with everyone in the movie. Ryan's like, "Okay, I don't know how to break this to you, but like the the middle like twenty minutes of the film basically like puts my brother on a pedestal and his music, and I love it, but he'll never agree to allow it in here, and, and it's not part of the Nuclear Gopher things post Nuclear Gopher. It's Bank Kids Unite stuff that is." they will all hate that it's in the film and it could, you could be litigated. So I had to like recut everything, which ended up being great. Cause then I fell in love with day trip. I already was in love with day trip, but I was like, Oh, I have to highlight a band. What band am I going to highlight? So I had a day trip in a way that I felt really good about, but I had this whole like 15 minute wow. cut. I had to replace because I love date. I love uh, pop riveter. Anyway, the, uh, the two Akai records are really good too. Yeah. Although- there's too much of them that are about me directly that I don't like to listen to those very much. But Reed's <laughs> the last the last song that I know of that Reed recorded is on the second Akai record. I think it's the last song, and it makes me cry every time I hear it. It's just phenomenal. So 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 so. And their production quality like just went so high. I mean, that was I think a lot of that was Eric too being involved. Yeah. Even it was a combination of Eric it. and it attainable recording technology. I mean, remember, yeah. in the late 90s, early 2000s, the technology available to do high-quality audio production at, like, home levels was much, much harder to get than today. Like, today, 20 years later, you can do this stuff much, much higher quality. So On an iPad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and I'm not de- degrading Eric's talent or anybody else's. They have phenomenal talent and you have to have I'm that talent to put it to use. I'm just saying like it is I'm actually jealous of the technology that they've got available because like in a, it, you know, we were so constrained by like tapes and limits and stuff we could not have ever afforded in the in the nineties, you know, like it's a beautiful world to be in right now. I think everybody should be making music. I will, I will say um, in the interest of goodwill uh, and also fantastic art, um, uh, the Akai's record, pretty songs about ugly things. um, It's probably Eric's opus. Uh, It's, it's, uh, it's his production opus. It's, uh, it's, it's, Ryan's younger sister Robbie and her husband Hiromi uh, they, they came to to Eric with basically like you know guy girl uh, uh, harmony uh, you know back and forth call and response uh, acoustic songs and he he built it into this like just glorious glorious opus and I wish we could put a lot more of it into this stuff but they would probably. 
I mean, it'd be kind of fun to do it as a podcast. Like, hey, we found this. We discovered this record. Let's talk about what we know about it. Yeah, it's also, (laughs) oh my God. One of the last road trips that Eric and I took, like, you know, we, we, we'll do that if we go on like a long road trip, which is like one of us will just kind of look wryly at the other and like, all right, let's, this is musical masturbation, but let's play one of our records. All right. <laughs> and just talk about like how good it was and stop at every bar on the way. Um, There's a couple more people in the chat. I just want to get to them. I think we'll, we'll wrap it up after these unless anybody else has anything to say. Oh, wow. Trini wrote quite a bit. Okay. From Bridget. Ryan's leaving the witness blog. Is it still online if we'd like to read it, Ryan? It's not online in the format of a blog, but all pretty much every post in the entire blog, plus kind of footnotes and explanatory comments, I put it all together in a free, freely downloadable ebook. It's on archive.org. If you search for Hira Hira, you'll find it. Um, it has been downloaded as of right now. Is it in its entirety? It is every post from my blog from back in the day. Yeah. And like I said, I wrote a bunch of footnotes and additional descriptive stuff. So it's been downloaded 1500 times or so. Oh, wow. so um, I'll put it in the chat. I thought about reposting it back onto my RyanSider.net blog as back posts, which is what it used to be. There's a little bit of a story involving my little brother for why it's no longer on there. Every post that was on that blog is in there. You gotta leave some things to the imagination. If you'd like to hear your current music projects and Cindy's, where's the best place to find those? I have a spot for some of it, but it's going to be in a new place and Ryan has other places for some of the music. But right now, if you go to witnessunderground.com forward slash art, there are links to a lot of things, a lot of Bandcamp links. And some Spotify links to all the artists. Like a lot, there's a lot there. Nucleargopher.com is coming back. Ryan, could you go into Trinity's posts real quick? Yeah. So Trinity, that's tough to know what to say. I mean, it sounds like you're pretty early in peeling back, unaware of the skeletons, and then you were getting treated badly when you didn't actually do anything worth DFing. I wish I could know what to say. I've heard a lot of people have very similar experiences and a lot of people that I know, including myself, uh, did not set out to leave the religion. We just found ourselves tumbling. That sounds a little bit of like what's happened with you. And I don't know what to say other than I'm sorry. There's some really good resources available online. I know when it's really fresh and it's really raw and you start to discover all the stuff that has been kept from you, that's going to keep you real busy for a while. There's a lot. I wish there wasn't more. I mean, sometimes people have like criticized this movie a little bit because it doesn't dig into all that stuff, but that's because there's so much available material that does. And finding the, the, the skeletons in the watchtower closet is like, the simplest thing you can possibly do. Um, And you kind of need to do it for yourself. And then also, I know Scott just posted recovering from religion.org. After you get through the part where you have to pick at all the scabs and blow everything apart, I feel like most people um, that I have seen go through this process, and I'm speaking for Chad as well, you go through a sort of teardown and rebuild of a lot of your brain. A friend of ours who was uh, very active in the music scene and everything else as well, he went through this and he described it to me as a Cartesian brain dump. He had to like start from, I think, therefore I am and rebuild everything. It's time consuming. I noticed you're saying you're seeing a therapist. Good. Most of us have. It's helpful. I fully agree with what Ryan said. When I left, it's still the most traumatic six months of my life. And I remember when I finally had the courage to tell my wife, she knew something was up because I was finding excuses to never go to the meetings. The time that she saw me, I was just like literally just bedridden in darkened rooms, just fucking depressed. And when she 
wasn't around, I was digging through the Watchtower CD-ROM, like trying to put it all back together. And she asked, what was it? And I was like, I cannot be responsible for you losing your relationship with Jehovah. Like I just, I was not ready to be responsible for that. My uh, baby mama, rad person, uh, we're, no, we're no longer together, but uh, I still have nothing but respect for her. She's a librarian, and I knew the one thing that I could say without to kind of put her on her own journey was basically exactly what Ryan says, look up the references. Mm. Look up the references. Any reference that's ever cited in any Watchtower or any publication, look them up. Because as the movie points out, it's not that they were wrong, it's that they fucking lie their asses off. Like the amount of intellectual dishonesty that it takes, that's a thread that just keeps unraveling everything. And so like, that's been my kind of like ethical disclaimer to myself. If somebody is like, well, what is it? What is it? I'm like, just look up the references. And if you have love for truth in your heart, you're gonna see the bullshit. And then it's just going to unravel. And it's not going to be fun. It's not fun. I wanted, you know, I wanted it to be, I wanted to put it all back together. But um... Another really safe thing you can do that's not really against their rules. And I mean, Trinity, if you're out already or whoever is watching this, if you're going through anything like this, the recoveringfromreligion.org website, I love because it has this references list that's like, for this religion, here's here's like 14 links and YouTube channels. And for this religion, there's three. And for this idea, there's 20. And for this, and it just goes on and on and on. And none of that stuff has anything to do with Jehovah's Witnesses. But it's a lot of the same structure for those different faith groups. And so you can give yourself the freedom to read that stuff. There is a whole bunch, there's a whole category for Jehovah's Witnesses, but if that's a if that bothers you or anyone who's watching this, that website is just a great resource and it's secular, non-religious. And that's the only thing I really like about it. And as far as like reformatting your brain, like starting with I think therefore I am, my story is in the film in a, in a sense, in that it's sort of autobiographical. I'm not in it. I don't I only say a couple lines in it as questions or responses to Ryan, my story is very similar in a similar path. And I read the references. That was my whole thing as a witness. I read any scientists they ever quoted. And it wasn't just read their quote, it was read their whole book. And I talked to elders after they quoted the same author. You quoted this scientist. Did you ever read what he had to say? No, I just pulled that from the watchtower. Oh, because he doesn't actually believe what you said. That quote wasn't like correct he's like oh you're not supposed to read anything outside of the washer well you just quoted the guy like i feel like that's enough reason alone you know and i was doing i was doing that for years before i like sort of had a clean slate when i finally left i was like oh in the congregation meeting like fuck i'm an atheist god damn it (laughs) and then had to like (laughs) look around at all these other cult members realizing for the first time that that's what they are and then left the room in the middle of the meeting like I don't want to be in a room filled with people like this, even though I had done that thousands of times. Being an atheist or identifying in that way at the beginning was really good because it was clean. It was like, okay, all of it's bullshit, not just this religion and this God, but like all the religions and all the gods, all the spirituality, which is not what I think now. I have added things back over the years. The people I know who have gotten out of other cult religions, exact same, atheist, at the start. As the credits rolled, I went to go grab us a couple of glasses of water. And he goes, so does that basically preclude any spirituality? And without missing a beat, I'm like, we're all atheists. <laughs> <laughs> I have come around. I'm an agnostic, but I'm like, I'm a post-militant atheist agnostic, which means, <laughs> baby, I don't fucking care. <laughs> like, <I> just, <laughs> it's cool. Like, you know, you got the Wayne coin, like, who knows? Maybe there isn't a vein of stars calling out my name. But, like, if there is to you, fuck, I don't care. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of like, I just don't want to have the argument. But I will say this. I think the philosophical arguments about is there a God or isn't there a God are, for me, of zero value. They don't have any content in them. But if you name the specific God you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell you whether or not I believe in that one. And it, and for most people, if you say Thor, unless they're such a Marvel fan that they actually think Chris Hemsworth is really him, uh, <laughs> the, the answer is going to be no. 
I'm that way with Hova. Yes. As, I just go one God further than you. Yeah, yeah. And I, I can't say there's no concept of a God. That's, that's strong atheism. I can yeah. say that this is a literary character. And my reasons are because he was a member of a pantheon before they even wrote these books. And there's 40 other gods in that pantheon I don't believe in. So why would I believe in the 41st one? Because the Babylonian pantheon, Reshef and Deber and Dagon and all these other gods, they're in the Bible, right? Hanging out with Yahweh. And I don't yeah. believe in them. So, you know, uh, that's where I come down as atheist. If you can name the God, I can tell you if I believe in that God. I can't tell. I'm you. a Neil Gaiman atheist in that, like, it, like I basically believe in all of the gods we've invented. We called them into existence. I'm oh yeah that there's another way to go maybe that's it maybe as soon as we invent them they're real i don't know <laughs> literary characters are very powerful i think that's a great place to stop unless anybody has any follow-up we hijacked the conversation long before but thank you very much for giving trinity, us you just be well just be well. and also yeah like, trinity thank you for commenting and like participating and like driving the conversation forward free, it was great trinity please feel right. free to reach out to uh to scott um, i'm not going to speak for anybody else but I'm more than happy to talk to you about my experience. I remember when that was very new and difficult. That's tough. It's not an experience that I would ever change. It forever influences who I am, but it's also one of the most difficult experiences of my life. And I would be more than happy to, you know, bullshit with you. I had a couple of friends who come up to me and they're like, how do you know? I've had my doubts, but how do you know? And, and, and in the past, I've gone like turbo apostate, like, I want to destroy your faith in Jesus. <laughs> turbo apostate. Like, Send them running back in. I've brained, yeah, and they, and they get all scared. I've brained back quite a bit. I just, I just <laughs> what's going to make you happy. And as long as you're using your critical thinking, I have several friends who are still in and I barely hear from them. I hear percolation still in, in name. Like they just kind of like are, are doing a very slow fade and that's fine. I respect it all. I'm also willing to be pinged about stuff. You can find me on most of the social stuff. I don't hide out very well. I mean, my domain <laughs> Ryan at Ryan Sutter .net, It's not like I'm really anonymous. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, so obscure, it's Ryan. Jesus. <laughs> All right. Well, this has been lovely, everybody. Yeah. I'm gonna. If, if you're looking, okay. Go ahead. All right. Okay. If you're looking for a community, there's we have the Patreon. So patreon.com forward slash Witness Underground, and that's where you can support this film and the series. And there's a whole season two of the Witness or the XW coming out series, and a lot of the all the podcast goes on there, and blog articles, all kinds of stuff. And that's just ramping up the film as the film is releasing. Um, that's a place to connect with others as well. And um, if you ever join it at any level, like you're in the family forever kind of thing. Um, Absolutely. There's a lot of great places to find other community, just like the Reddit EXJW subreddit XJW is really good for finding just venting whatever you want to say it's a good spot good resource anybody who wants to like process anything or or just bounce shit off uh of me just reach out to me through scott i'm more than willing to open myself up to that i read every post and every email that comes through the website witnessunderground.com so that's a great place to connect if you want me to put you in touch with somebody in the movie um i can make that happen if since chad is offering that if you want to find ryan you can go to his website <laughs> no but i'm sure everyone everyone's open-minded but thanks again for everyone for coming and thanks yeah, guys for thank you. Thank and you. Annie, everyone who's here for watching and participating. Really appreciate it. All right. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Take care. Agape, right. bitches. Thank you so much for coming to watch this episode of the Witness Underground podcast. Check out witnessunderground.com to find more information, videos like this. Find the actual podcast, stream it on whatever audio listening platform you like or app. Participate in the grant if you're interested and you're an artist, want to make something, go apply for the grant. And we, as artists in this film community, and this project witness underground we will review your submission and we will grant you the money as soon as the film is released to the public so that's still an ongoing process if you want to help out and make things faster reach out to me there's a lot of things i need help with if you're a show and you want to if you're interested in having anyone in our film on your show we are focused on that right now getting other podcasts please reach out 
you can reach me at the email is xjwdoc so xjwdoc for ex jehovah's witness documentary xjwdoc at gmail.com witnessunderground.com is where you can find all the information for this show thank you so much for being here and listening and please share it with someone you think would be interested in to, to watching the film or listening to the podcast i really appreciate your time see you on the next one